has come to uh, build a mouthpiece on this side. Now there's several ways that we can go. The most simplest way is to shape the end here and uh, so and so that you uh, can use it as a mouthpiece that won't cut into your lips. But the problem is here that this hole is kind of too big. It's more than three centimeters or one and a quarter inch. And also it's irregular in shape. As you can see so if you plan to build a didgeridoo and just shape the end into a mouthpiece before you do anything I would take this this uh, hole maker and drill a perfect round hole there so that when you bore it out later on you will not touch that area and uh, then you can uh, <clears throat> shape the end into a mouthpiece but uh, I didn't do that so the other way to go would be to use wax now uh, <clears throat> you can buy wax from didgeridoo stores or you can mix your own wax most people use bees wax and mix it with can uh, what do you call it can canalba wax uh, to uh, I think that's the name of it to harden it up a little bit I've tried to use uh, candle wax but you know wax is wax and when you plate then the the heat of your body from your lips will uh, kind of soften the wax and you find yourself constantly trying to shape put it back into shape to to continue playing so it's it's a kind of a pain so uh, the best way is to just build another uh, take another piece of wood and build a mouthpiece and glue it on so that's the route we're gonna go I use this plank of alder wood and I, as you can see I've used it before for mouth for to make a mouthpiece so that's the the route we go. I'll cut a mouthpiece out of that and glue it on the end. So I have the uh, alder plank clamped in my vise with some backing board, so that when the hole maker drill goes through the alder, that it won't uh, splinter on on the back side. That's what this backing board is for. I'll use a uh, one and a quart size hole maker. One and a quart comes out to three centimeters, which is uh, just perfect for most people. Uh, just the perfect size for for a mouthpiece on a didgeridoo. Okay, let's drill the hole. It's nice to have a a, a bubble here to level for to level your uh, drill, which I have, so you know that your drill is perpendicular to the plank. So there she goes.
Get a little bit more. We're almost there. That's it. The, uh, the backing board prevented the, the backside from splintering when the hole maker came through. The next thing is to uh, put the bore on here and line it up with the hole and make a pencil mark where I have to cut it out. Okay, so to uh, line up the bore, I'll, I'll use this sponge. Like that. So that's where we got to Then I make an alignment mark here so I know where about it should go. Well, I was going to show you how to how I cut this uh, mouthpiece out of the plank, but uh, <laughs> I thought the camera was on, but it was off, you know. So uh, here it is. I used my uh, my jigsaw because most people don't have a bandsaw. But with the bandsaw, this is a lot easier to cut. But you can use the jigsaw. Just make sure that you uh, uh, clamp down the plank real good on your workbench. Otherwise, when the jigsaw hits it, it will start vibrating. So, uh, and when you cut it, here it is. Make sure you don't cross the pencil line that you made because otherwise it'd be too small so there it is and i line up this uh, this mark i made here with a pencil mark on the didgeridoo and it should be fine and then i'll glue it in uh, i'll probably use that same uh, piece of foam i had here to line it up with the bore I'll show you how to glue it. So what I did is I put the uh, foam rubber in here to line up this piece of wood and and I put some three clamps here so I can tie some elastic bands to it from one side to the other to hold, hold down the, the wood while it's curing. Okay, I'm going to transfer the the index mark to this side from here. The lighting is not too hot. From here to this this side so that I can line it up with this mark here. With this mark here. Okay. I'll put the glue on. I'll use the same tight bond too this time. So 
spread it out nice and even. The excess here. So my index marks is here. I'm gonna line it up with there with that. And now that's where the rubber bands come in. Okay, check it one more time. Index line more lined up. Everything looks good. There it is. And then tomorrow, after it's all cured, I can take a rough bastard file and get it in a rough shape and then follow up with a finer file and then sandpaper etc etc okay folks that's it for today oh.